And here we are in the next round. Emma v. Lewis here. And now it's going to be a very interesting duel to Ice Riders here. But only one, probably in the back line for Emma, not leading with it is an interesting choice. Unfortunately for Emma here, Calyrex is going to be a huge threat to both of these Pokemon. Dragon weak to Ice, as well as Amoongus being a uh, Grass type, also weak to Ice. But I think Amoongus actually withstands this hit. Raging Bolt, if it's using the conventional Assault Vest, it will definitely withstand it too, but it definitely won't feel nice. <laughs> definitely will not be the best scenario to be in. But now there is the Terra from Lewis. He's going to Terra the Indeedy, try and give it a little bit more survivability with that Terra Fairy. And outlast any dragon moves coming out from Emma. Oh, and I think it's using the goggles. Yes, indeed he is running the safety goggles. Um, so any spores that would be trying to come out here would just go to it instead. Now we're seeing Kylerix using that Glacial Lens as predicted. It's not going to opt for the Trick Room. Wow. And again, both of these Pokemon are super effective against it. They're going to resist, thankfully. Spore is going to get redirected onto the Ndidi. And that means, of course, it's just going to hit those safety goggles instead. That's going to be another turn purchase for Lewis to just get these uh, Glacial Lances out. And you really have no reason to just not press that button again. I wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly what's going to be done here. And protects are going to come out, but I don't even think that uh, Trick Room's up, so it's just a stalling another turn, but you're not really even getting much out of stalling this turn. Exactly. You're going to stall out this turn. Oh, Volt Switch. Volt that's Switch smart. comes out. Deals decent damage to the Ndidi, but what do you really calories? swap into here? Maybe your own Calyrex comes out because it would resist the Glacial Lance at the least, but it would be then weaker <laughs> to, than your opponents. I'm not sure which one would be faster. Oh, the Calyrex here. Yeah. Send Outside of powers. Trick Room, Emma's is faster. Okay. Well, again, it is a level 100 versus level 80 Calyrex, so we can't quite see for sure who is actually faster when they get both get cut down to 50. But the tech on the Amoongus and this Calyrex is going to take a hit, and it's not going to be very effective, not at all. Um, a switch for... Okay, no, not actually. I think the high horsepower might come up, but no, it's just going to be another Glacial Lance. Amoongus will go down if nothing comes out, and Follow Me is going to get picked up by Indeedy. Again, just a very simple strategy to execute. Press Glacial Lance, press Follow Me, <laughs> great things will happen for your team. Exactly, and I think that's why it's so popular here, especially in these early men. You want some bread and butter combos that are just easy to perform, so remember, and just able to be reliable especially this early on and because the glacial lands probably gonna do a lot to this indeedy yep takes down the indeedy but the calyrex is still standing and now it looks like lewis is down to three pokemon well will this be able to answer here bring it down to three on their side as well and try and get a chilling day but now we're going to be in a similar situation for both of these Pokemon here where they're both going to get plus one and they're both going to be switching in one additional Pokemon. We at least know uh, the Raging Bolt coming out for Emma, um, but who else could be brought out? We're not exactly sure. It might be the Urshifu, but if you already have the Amoongus, some convention that I kind of picked up from yesterday is if you see the uh, Amoongus, it's very common to see the Incineroar uh, followed up as well. So it's very possible that fourth Pokemon is going to be that Incineroar. But uh, Goldnego could be coming out here too. With that oh. ability, it is going to be pretty significant of a threat here. Yeah, Golden Go is actually a big threat to Calyrex. It pretty much counters it on both sides of the type. Ghost and Steel. Ghost is good against the Psychic Steel, good against that Ice. But now this Incineroar is going to be pressuring that Steel type with some, with that fire. But now the high horsepower also can be a little bit of a threat on both sides. Calyrex covering the Protect, hoping that the Flare Blitz comes its way, if that is what Emma chooses to use on the Incineroar. Big choice to make. Do you Shadow Boy? Do you Shadow Ball? Do you make it rain? Or do you try and go for a big setup, nasty plot? And this is just goes to show how powerful um, this Golden Go really is. Um, with the spread moves coming up from both sides of the field, um, Calyrex and Golden Go, very powerful. Um, 
duo to really be able to withstand the Calibrix threat, and I think that might be one other solution that's kind of being discovered here to the uh, Calibrix reign of terror. And it might even be effective against the uh, Shadow Rider, but I have to think about that a little more as we're seeing the Water Terror coming out, which is going to protect it from the Incineroar. But all oh, the psychic, psychic terrain prevents priority moves from coming out. A little bit of a blunder there, but Calibrix is going to take the Shadow Ball, high horsepower retaliation that probably is going to KO yet, yeah, especially with that boost. So Golden Go is going to go down, and that's going to be another boost for this Calyrex, but I don't think it's going to be around long to really utilize it here. Actually, yeah, well, the Trick Room, that means that now Lewis is, so now we know Emma's is faster than Lewis's, but with that Trick Room up, it's going to be flipped on his head now. It's going to be completely flipped on its head, and now Amukus is out here for Lewis, but I don't know how much that's going to be doing here. You try, kind of need something to try and take down this Calyrex. It's double boosted by this point. Do they have anything very effective to take it down? I mean, you could use the Glacial Lance, but we saw before that really does not do much at all. I feel like with the boost, it might actually KO here. Um, I can't say for certain. Do you go for the... Oh, I wait. It's, it's effective now because water. Oh, uh, oh, I think so. Yeah, so you're talking about Emma using... Yes. Uh, I was talking about Lewis using um, the uh, Glacial Lance, but I think High Horsepower is a play. Either way, you're going to get the KO. All and the yeah, Protect, protect is going to be the play instead for Lewis. And, uh, or actually, no, for Emma. Emma's the one that is Water Terra. Yep. I think they both have Water Terra. I thought it was... Okay, cool. Well, Calyx is going to protect itself, and High Horsepower is going to come out onto the Rage Bolt. That's going to be another boost, and this guarantees now, next turn, I think it's... I think that's the game. Actually, no, fake out. Actually, no, but Psychic Terrain. Psychic so. Terrain. Will Psychic Terrain go down next turn? That's so. the, Oh, it's gone. Yeah, fake so now out. Fake Out is going to be uh, coming into play. So you're not guaranteed to go down here. You have another turn on your own Calyrex, um, and you can save your next turn. Um, you can use it to protect. Oh, the Clear Amulet. Oh, yes, Clear Amulet, yes. Stops the Lord attacks, and now they're still both as strong as they could possibly get at this point in the game. I think the play might just be to high horsepower the Incineroar, because um, Cal actually no, because Calyrex protected last turn. Yes. So maybe you do go for the Glacial Lance. You possibly could. It's not very effective score. on both sides as of right now, but you might just have to try and hope that that boost is enough to push you over the edge. Looking over there, though. Spore Rage Powder. What do you do on this Amoongus? I feel like you probably just spore the Calyrex and then just stall out the yeah, just stall out the turn. Um, force that Calyrex to go to sleep. Fake out is gonna come out onto the Amoongus, however, it's not gonna go out onto the Calyrex. Uh, so you, you make the play, you make the call, it's not gonna go the way you think, but still you're not gonna be walking away from this too upset. Your Amoongus is still gonna be healthy enough to make it to the next turn. Will it? Yes. No, no, not with the oh, double right, boost. I forgot the boost, right, <laughs> for sure. And now you have the triple boost. As strong as this Calyrex could get, this is it. This is the pinnacle of Calyrex gaming. It's all up to, it's all up to Lewis to try and somehow get a double KO out of this. But I think... He does move first. He does move first. I, I do still think Lewis takes this because he could either high horsepower um, just to guarantee he's able to take out the opposing Calyrex and the next turn take out the Incineroar. I don't think Incineroar can threaten the KO on its own. Um, it could, the, the most damaging thing I could imagine would be doing a, a knockoff. Um, yeah, or there's no Flare Blitz. It could even Will-O-Wisp. Ooh, that would be an absolutely dastardly move there, lowering that attack even by a little would mm. do major things in this game here. High horsepower to take down the Calyrex. That's a smart move. Yep. Is, are we going to see the Will-O-Wisp, or are we just going to see the knockoff coming out? That's going to be the real question here. This first move is going about as we predicted, but with the Will-O-Wisp being an option, is that going to be the play? No, it's just going to be the knockoff instead. Oh, but it's, it's super happen. effective because of the psychic coverage. But unfortunately, this Incineroar really does not have any chance of withstanding. Trick Room up one more turn. Yeah. It's going to be a completely different game if we just had one more turn in here. But no, this is going to go Lewis's way. Calculated all the math out here and managed to logic his way out to a first.
first round victory. Very well played by both competitors here. As we already see, it came down to the wire. Low HP on your restricted 1v2 situation. Very not, not very often we see the 1v2 situations go in the favor of the one, but this is one of the circumstances where Kylo Rex is just so powerful. It exactly. doesn't really phase it to go down against two Pokemon. And that's just the support setup as well going their way. Just getting that, that extra little bit of setup. That trick room was absolutely imperative from breaking this tie between the Calyrixes. And as we've seen, very strong Pokemon. I, there is a method to trying to get it early. You want to try and get as many as boosts as you can. Mm -hmm. You want to be there at least when a Pokemon falls. You want to try and get that swap out if it's not out the first turn as early as possible. But now, looking at this match, what do you think we're gonna do differently? We didn't see the Gothel, we didn't see the Urshifu. It's, it's hard to say for sure because you don't want to change things up too much. You build your team around one specific strategy, of course. And of course, like we saw it, I just realized we saw it at one point for both of these players where you just have Calyrex with the, with the Follow Me. Um, we saw, of course, among us, it's not Follow Me, it's Rage Powder, but it has this exact same effect where it redirects to that tankier Pokemon. Um, and you don't want to do anything but that because it's just so effective. But how do you set yourself up for success to get that in a position where it's just so much easier? One thing for sure, honestly, I wouldn't even say the Pelipper coming in because Glacial Lance wasn't that big of a threat for Lewis. To be fair, though, that is because uh, Emma didn't lead with Calyrex. So there's still so many different things that could be done here. Uh, we could see the Pelipper lead. We could see the Calyrex lead for both sides. We're not sure. We're gonna find out right now. Both of the Pokemon you mentioned are coming yeah, up. Yeah, there we are. Getting a big switch up here. You need to bring out those unknown variables. Get an edge, especially when they're relatively effective against your opponent. And now with the Shadow Tag, no switch outs are gonna be possible. Mm -hmm. We are locked in here on the side of Lewis, at least for now. And it's a situation where you definitely are trapped in here with me, not the other way around, because this Urshifu threatening to KO, I believe, both of these Pokemon. Um, Indeedy, definitely going to want to try to go for that follow me, but do you risk not setting up the trick room and just going for a double Glacial Lance, or do you just try to get the most from it? But going to go for the trick room. Um, I'm pretty sure you still want to follow me. You don't want to risk Dazzling Gleam, because I think that exposes you, or it, it at least exposes your Calyrex to going down too early. I think close combat might knock it out. Unless you Terrastalize into the water, I, won't, I don't think you would do want to do anything but follow me on your... Uh, indeedy, but actually, maybe the play? So Terror it is going to be the water, Terrastalization onto Lewis's Calyrex, but I don't, did he commit to the follow me on the uh, Indeedy? I think so. Helping hand. Ooh, helping hand though, will this even matter at this point? Does it have enough tankiness to take this one down? And KO. this is a rapid strike, so it's not going to have that oh. coverage. U-turn. Oh, okay, U-turn instead. Um, that's going to be huge damage onto the Indeedy. In onto the Indeedee. Uh, so next turn is probably going to go down. We might see uh, Emma's Calyrex making the entrance here, or it could even be Raging Bolt. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's either of these Pokemon, but it is going to be the Calyrex coming out now uh, to kind of check Lewis's own. Yeah, for sure. Now, the yeah, nerve is out here. The Trick Room goes up, and now Lewis in a very good spot. He has beaten the speed the speed game now with this trick room. Glacial Lance, what do you do though? The Calyrex Zero is always an interesting one. The Glacial Lance does good damage against the opponent, but it's not gonna do very much until you get those boosts against the enemy Calyrex. So, bit of a standstill there, you're just gonna have to try and break it with this Indeedy. Okay, I like this play. I'm trying to get as much damage spread out as much as possible. There's no heal factor here. I don't believe uh, Emma would have brought Amoongus in this lineup. I don't think it would even necessarily be a bad idea. I just don't see that being the play. So you don't have to worry about any heals. Getting damage on Calyrex is huge. You want as much damage as possible, get it done. But in fact, actually opting go for the Protect, I guess switched off of the Helping Hand. And uh, that's going to be protected by Lewis's Calyrex. It's going to hit the Indeedy, however, and that's going to be a boost for this Calyrex. But what I think might have been the realization coming out from Lewis is it's probably better to just let your Indeedy go down so you can switch in your Pelipper safely, and now you have Wide Guard on your arsenal. Exactly. You have to try and get that Wide Guard in there, shut down that Calyrex. But right now, 
I would. I don't oh. mind the Amoongus switch. Neither do I. It's not a bad option. You want to make. You can even sleep one of these mods and just focus in on one, potentially. The Spore. Yeah, Gothitelle doesn't have Follow Me, so this Spore is going to hit the target that it intends. And I wouldn't be. I would be surprised if we go for anything other than Spore here. It really is just the effective play. Oh, the Pollen Puff. It's effective, though, but. It would be, it'd be able to knock out the Gothitelle, but. Oh, oh, okay. oh, it's super effective. Oh, because it is psychic. I forgot. We it's always keep forgetting. Because it's called the Ice Rider, not right. Mind Rider or something. Exactly. It's an ice horse. <laughs> but Protect is going to come out from Emma's uh, Calyrex, kind of calling out the spore. And then you're going to go for the Pollen Puff onto the Gothitelle instead. Because you're forced to protect, really. You have no choice but to protect on that Calyrex. Because you risk the Pollen Puff and you risk the um, spore. The spore is definitely the bigger threat. So Gothitelle is going to take a Glacial Lips. Lance, but still in the game for sure. Foul play is going to come out onto Calyrex, just do a little bit of chip damage. And again, any damage you can do is very valuable. Um, Pollen Puff not going to come out again because Calyrex is still uh, can't protect anymore. So we're going to see the Spore come out onto the Calyrex now to really put Emma in a bind, which I think is going to succeed here. And with that Trick Room up, we know Lewis's team is going to act first. I feel like we might see a swap out on this Gothitelle as well, potentially trying to preserve that Gothitelle. Maybe even a swap out on the Calyrex, because that Spore is going to be so threatening. You don't want your main hyper carry to be able to be taken down like that. This is where the Incineroar comes into play. If he did bring Incineroar, that's where you'd want to switch it in. Um, you're basically wasting the turn of the Amoongus. Oh, a Terra. Terra. Terra yes. Water, I believe. Okay. There it is. I don't know if that's going to do for Emma here. Yes, yeah, so we know it's not switching out. It's going to be going to sleep at the very least. And to get some of that pollen puff uh, pressure. Yeah. But not the spore pressure. What's, what's probably going to happen here is Lewis is just going to knock out the Gothitelle and then that's going to get a plus one boost for um, him. And the Calyrex is still able to withstand. Like, there's realistically not a lot that... Uh, actually, no, high horsepower is still going to be a really damaging move. So um, Emma is... Emma's Calyrex is still pretty scared out here, but he has an Urshifu to worry about. Yeah, they have an Urshifu to worry about, and now... Oh, it is the Amoongus. It's going to be another Ditto Amoongus. Oh, with the redirection, just by turns with the sleep. Exactly, some spore pressure, buy some turns with the sleep, try and get your opponent to sleep and win the sleep tie, but that Glacial Lance with no Terra is going to be very, very scary on the side of Emma, at least for right now. Trick Room is about to go down too. I, I think you commit the Glacial Lance and try and take it down with the plus one you already got. I don't think the plus one... I, I'm actually... I, I really... Against the Amoongus? I, it's... It's hard to say. Actually, no, Amoongus is defense, is special defensive, not regular defensive, so... Going for a protect. I like the yeah, defensive play as well. Smog. Clear smog. That reduces Decent. the stats, so wow. that's going to get rid of the boost. I completely forgot about that. That's an amazing good. play from Lewis. And you the think of that. Spore, I mean, yeah, you, you have no choice but to protect. I honestly would have liked seeing the Spore. Oh, and it's going to be a first turn wake up as well for oh, Emma. Big protect. Wow, Lewis went for with the very conservative option there, but it paid out dividends protecting okay. that Calyrex through that and oh, getting rid of the stat the change. Crit. I don't know if that would have KO'd without the crit, but at the very least, I think the call from Lewis might have just, or the call from Emma might have just been to uh, just get the, not, you didn't want to spore the, oh, Pelipper's coming out now with the Exactly, we, wide the guard. wide guard okay, is going to just. sacrificing your Moongus, just stall more turns. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And now you can just play around this Pelipper here. Trade out these things. You just have to try to take out this Amoongus right now. You have two boosts on your Calyrex. Nothing to really cleanse it. You just need to try and be faster than this Amoongus, but with Trick Room down, oh, it yeah. might not be able protect to. Protect use last turn too, so you can't. You can't protect. Wide guard. Like, I, I'm pretty sure the play for Emma would just be to go straight into high horsepower into... Um, Calyrex. Uh, you don't want to risk the wide guard, and you're not scared of Pelipper. Actually, you might be, though, because, again, the Weather Ball and the Hurricane are pretty strong moves all around, but it's just going to protect itself, and the Amoongus is also going to protect. protect. Interesting. A little bit of a stall turn here. Mm -hmm. Let's see how this Glacial Lance looks from Emma, or from uh, Lewis here. 
Alright, is that enough? No, it's still not doing all too much, even with double attack. Oh, wait, wow. Okay, I thought... Are they speed tied? This might be a speed tie. Because I remember last time, Emma's was going first. I'm not sure. Yes, This, this that is a was very interesting turn here. And this is a very interesting battle when it comes to the number side of things. Uh, but in any case, now we have a little bit of a mind game going on about uh, will he or won't he when it comes to the wide guard. Do you try calling it out and uh, going for it, or do you predict the fact that your opponent's going to know you're going to go for it and just go for something else instead? It seems they're going to go for the spore, spore. onto the Pelipper. Oh, getting rid of the wide guard yeah. is something I didn't even think of here. Absolutely. Pelipper is now basically out of this game, and Glacial Lance is going to knock out Amoongus, I'm pretty sure, but with that Urshifu in the back line, this game is still anyone's game. Still anyone's game. This Pelipper needs to wake up soon or else things are looking very doomed for Lewis. Yeah. Oh, Calibris actually withstands that. I'm I'm honestly kind of shocked to see. Uh, base, actually, it's one boost. Or actually, no boost now for this Calibris. One, one boost for Emma as they were there for the Amoongus to fall okay, after right. the clear smog. Right. But still doing good damage, but not enough to take down the Calyrex. Uh, another Glacial Lance, but that's not going to be good against the Urshifu. Do you try and protect? Stall it out. Hope your Pelipper wakes up. I feel like that might be your only guaranteed win condition. But you might be able to take down this Calyrex with one more Glacial Lance. Go for a Hurricane, potentially. If this Hurricane wake-up happens right here, Lewis will have undoubtedly won this match. It's all coming down to these last few turns. Calyrex KO. Oh, but with the Trick Room, I feel like, yeah, since Calyrex, I think that is a speed tie. It is a speed, tie. A speed tie, and it went Lewis's way both times. And that's going to knock out Emma's Calyrex, but I feel like even if Urshifu survives this turn, oh, and that's going to be the Wake Up Hurricane as wake well. Wake Up Hurricane and Rain, never going to miss. There it is, super effective. Lewis doing amazing in this entire set, playing so many amazing reads time after time is going to take this one two and oh what i'm also realizing now is that lineup that lewis is running in that second game was basically just one pokemon to hit and then four support mons for that one pokemon this restricted format again it can be played in so many different ways but the predominant strategy we're seeing is just all in on protecting your restricted pokemon and it's working for most players it's definitely working for lewis in that game and if it ain't broke don't fix it exactly support always very very strong I'll give props to emma as well they played very very well but i think their team just didn't get Get, get going. The engine just wasn't starting there. Mm -hmm. it's going at full max speed, especially with the speed tie going the way of Lewis. Yeah. It just ended up going Lewis's way most of the time. Yeah, I feel like that game, I, I don't know if it came down to the speed tie necessarily, but it definitely didn't help. <laughs> yeah, it was not not a bonus at all. <laughs> yeah, so ultimately that game is going to go to Lewis now 4-0 and I believe in these runs, but I think we're going into round 5 next, which will be the last round of Swiss Pools before we head into the top cut. So, ladies and gentlemen, Really, the stakes could not be getting any higher right now as we're getting ever so close. Once again, so many people here are just a couple points away from qualifying two worlds. So making top cut really is everything here. It's very close. And of course, we still have two more days of action. So if you don't make it through here today, you have more chances tomorrow. But of course, you'll take anything you can get. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll see who's going to be facing off in round five and who's going to make it into the top cut after a very short break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back back.